This is Bosley. He is a 15, 16 week old Boston Terrier puppy. Um, we are working on impulse control and this is our third session. And as you can see, he's doing great. Now the purpose of what you're seeing here is usually Bosley goes after anything that moves. He goes after feet, uh, long pant legs, um, he goes after blankets, rugs, toys, other dogs. I mean, he's just yeah. struggles with his impulse control. And he jumps up a lot, you know, and he's really, really mouthy. And usually, if you challenge him at all, uh, he'll grumble or growl or, or uh, it gets escalated really quickly. And at his age, a lot of people uh, would freak out, but dogs as young as six, seven, eight weeks old can get growly and, and act dominant. So what we're doing here is an exercise that just desensitizes him to the movement. Uh, as you can see, he's not going after my feet at all and I'm even trying to rile him up a bit here. So the purpose of this exercise uh, is to give him you know, something that he values greater than, than chasing my feet or grabbing my pants leg. And I'm really baiting him. When you first start this exercise, you don't do what I'm doing here. The reason I had to do this is because he was being so good. So how you would start is teaching him a really strong sit. And then just barely moving something around him that you know, triggers that reaction and then immediately asking for a sit right away. That way, all of these things, instead of triggering a play drive, a strong play drive, it triggers him to control his impulses and sit for a treat. And yes, you do have to have treats. Um, if you like, you can use toys. You can give him a toy, let him tug on it a bit, but then you also have to have a good strong drop it <laughs> if you want to do that. Now, as you can see here, he does not care about my feet at all. So we move on to something else, but this is literally the third time I've done this exercise with him. And this is how good he's being. Here's the first time you see something from him. So I stop moving yes. and I ask for a sit. Very, very, very good. You see it again. See, he kind of goes for it, yes. but he changes his mind right there. And I ask for the sit. I'm making the hand motion too. So now he's really going after me. And so since he, I got him so riled up, I do some body blocking. I step into him to make sure he gives me some space and then ask him to sit again. It helps settle him down. Now it's worth noting that sometimes when you do the blocking, if you don't mean it or if you've had experiences with him for too long a period of time with him challenging you, you just need to do a little bit more positive reinforcement first. Make sure he understands that there's something positive on the other end of that block. They need to learn to respect your space. See, I stopped moving because he opened his mouth, but then I keep on antagonizing him. <laughs> um, they do need to learn to respect your space and, and, and movement is a big part of that. Body language is everything to a dog. So they have to learn to respect that, but if you don't back it up with some serious positive reinforcement, they won't understand what you're trying to accomplish if they've escalated to a point where, uh, where Bosley had already escalated, Good boy. which is just an extreme case of mouthiness. We are conditioning the dog to sit for a treat rather than bite. Now this may start with simply standing in front of him and rewarding him looking at you rather than your floor. Then try just taking one step. Slowly add in the silly movements and you don't have to bait your dog as much as I did to see success. He was just doing so good after just a few sessions I was trying to get a rise out of him. And that didn't even work. And this is a dog that usually gets very fussy if anyone tries to make him get back from anything. Now, if he does go for you, you can add a verbal correction like a no or an ah and step in towards him a bit. But if he escalates, you can simply stand still and look up and away from the dog. When he settles, ask him to sit and treat him. Then you just repeat the process all over again, just at a lower threshold. 
Um, what I mean by threshold is that you pushed them too far too fast and just take it back a step. Putting on shoes is something else that's difficult for him. So if you have a dog like that, the last thing you want to do is try to do this exercise when you're in a rush out the door because they're going to feed off of that and likely just go after the shoe even more. And if you try to correct them, they'll just go nuts. So you have to practice this. It doesn't have to be every day, but it has to be fairly regularly until the dog stops reacting to the leashes or, or putting on shoes. So here he gets a little bit more interested, but it's more in my hands. But I do block him anyway. So I gave him a bump right there, and he backed up and sat right away. So I gave him a treat. And the reason he backed up and sat right away and respected that decision to ask him to back off is because we've practiced it. You back away, you sit, you get a treat. So we're, we're conditioning that response out of him. But it's really important not to do these exercises, you know, in the during the day when you don't have time to really work with him. So you have to practice when you can spend a few minutes doing this. And the rest of the time, you have to make sure you set your dog up to succeed. So if I was actually going outside, I would put him in another room or I would put him in his crate while I put my shoes on so we didn't have to be rushed and, and, uh, and teach bad habits by letting him get away with being mouthy towards the shoe. So we're going to up the ante here a little bit with the blanket, which is harder for him because he's doing so good with everything else. And look, he's still ignoring it, but I'll get him into it in a minute because he really likes chewing on the blanket. There we go. See his mouth open on that one. Now, again, I'm really baiting him here just to, just to show you how he gets. Now, this is usually how he is with just about everything, and this is new. So, look, I bump him. And I didn't have a treat, but it looked like I did. So he backed off and sat right away. And then I give him the treat. So we're going to do it again. And look, he doesn't even care about it. But I still make him give some distance from the blanket just to make sure. And then I give him a treat for it. Oh, here we go again. So this time I stepped into him. You saw that. And I did it again. The reason I'm doing this is just to make sure it doesn't instigate that growliness because usually if you challenge him at all, he gets all growly. So that's why I'm, I'm doing this extra. Stepping into him more things like that is to practice showing him that you don't have to get growly. You just sit and you get a treat, which is working really well for him. See, I did it again. I, I, when he jumped up, I bumped into him. He sat right away. Puppies are such fast learners. So now I'm going to actually try to fold the blanket. See, I bumped into him again. What did he do? He sat right away. So you're conditioning them that if you ask them for space, they, ba they back off and they sit. Now, will you filter out the treats? Absolutely. But if you have a dog that's already reactive to those kinds of just basic, you know, body movement communication then you definitely want to curb that right away. Here I'm folding it and he just completely <laughs> ignores it. What a good boy. Now this last part on section one, part one, that I want to show you is actually not for training purposes. This is just to show after just a few sessions how quickly you can condition a behavior. So look at that. I put my arm up stiffly after baiting him to start mouthing it, and he immediately backs off. So watch this. I'm going to do it at a little bit lower level, not quite so exciting. Soon as he looks at me, yes and treat. I mark all good behaviors with a yes. It's kind of like clicker training. So anytime your dog does something good, it's yes and then reward. So here I do it again. I pick up his feet so you get the mouthiness. Watch. See, as soon as I put my hand up stiffly, he backed away and looked at me expecting a treat. That is a conditioned response. Now, some dogs will do it instinctively, but if they have spent even a few days being able to get away with being growly and challenging, all that initial instinct will go out the window. 
Um, so that's what we're doing here is we're, we're retraining him basically. There it is again. He stopped right away, even after I was rolling him around. We're, we're helping him remember that when someone asks for space, when another dog, when another animal asks for space, you respect it right away and back off. We're, we're basically helping him be more, more submissive. And he's a very confident, very strong-minded dog, and none of that is going to change by doing any of this. But what it does do is uh, help you get some of yeah. your respect back that you might have lost if you have one of those growly, growly, overexcited puppies. Now, it's uh, also worth noting that in order to get on the couch, he sits. In order to go in and out of the door, he sits. To get leashed up, he sits. To get fed, he sits. So his whole life <laughs> becomes uh, stop and sit. And, and look how riled up I can get him. And just by doing that hand motion up in the air, he stops right away and focuses on food. Now, if your dog isn't as food motivated, you can do this with toys. Um, we actually worked with Boz with toys, and it wasn't quite as powerful as food, but it was still it still worked nicely. If you're dealing with a mouthy puppy or dog, make sure you don't do any games that encourage that behavior, like playing chase, wrestling, or tug of war to the point of growling, things like that. Just use common sense. If you're doing something and they start to exhibit the behavior that you don't want, then you know you can't do that anymore around him unless you uh, can have the time and the, the setup to work through it. And then when you don't have that time, you have to, you know, put the puppy away, put the dog away where they can't see you do that behavior. Because even letting them get away with it just once is encouraging it. You might as well be feeding them treats for, for allowing them to do it. Okay, to see part two of training, just click on the link here and you'll see some more advanced uh, uh, issues like dealing with the toys and a rug and, and things like that.